What could possibly go wrong during a 90 day challenge? I bought my tire. This is an indoor cycling challenge. Okay, so who would wanna watch someone ride a bike indoors for 90 days in a row? I had to make it interesting. So I broke it down to two different challenges. First, I'll give you a recap of the first 30 days. I'm starting this with six weeks left in the year. I've noticed that COVID has added a few extra pounds. So for some people, it's like the COVID 10. For me, it was more about like the COVID 20. The goal of this challenge is to just basically feel better. It's not really a weight loss challenge, although I will be checking in to stay relevant. Another goal within the challenge is to do this entire 30 days of cycling in the smallest room in my house to show you that you can literally do this anywhere. The rules of this challenge are simple. I'm cutting out the gym so then that way I can see the effects that cycling has on my body cycling 30 days in a row. I already eat rather healthy. I'm not going to count things because literally who has time for that? I wanted to keep this challenge as simple as possible. That's why I'm using a bike and a wheel on trainer because who has a spin bike just lying around? And to make this challenge exciting because who really wants to see a guy ride a bike for 30 days, or for you to believe that I'm actually cycling for 30 days, I will be documenting every single day on Zwift and Strava. Just so then that way, you at home can follow along. My ultimate goal is to cycle 1,100 kilometers, which is the distance from Paris, France to Barcelona, Spain. Now that might not sound very far on a bike, but when you're on Zwift, 50 kilometers on a stationary bike is very different than 50 kilometers on Zwift. Twist, turns, and and hills. So for the next 30 days, I will be putting a lot of time and energy on the bike. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Day one was a lot harder than I expected. Days three, four, and five were a little bit easier. 60 minute rides and I started to feel a lot stronger in the saddle. The first week was really tough. So I turned to the rest of the videos on this channel to motivate me to push through, which also brings me to comfort. Sitting on a bike for a long time is kind of painful. Most important thing you're gonna want for cycling is padded short. So a padded short is gonna have a chamois in it. Chamois is kind of the most important part of your entire wardrobe. Fast forward through weeks two and three, where I progressively added a little bit more and then a little bit more, tapering back and adding a little bit more. The one thing I've realized about these challenges is to listen to my body. Don't push it too much. Which brings me to day 18. And there you have it. 100K on an indoor trainer, done. When you Google how to create a habit, the 2190 rule comes into play. So what is the 2190 rule? Well, it's do something for 21 days straight, and this completes day 21, and then become a master at it for the remaining 90. Now, I always believe in challenges to finish strong. This brings me to day 25. There you have it, 160.9 kilometers or 100 miles or a century ride indoors. Why? Because it's snowing and hasn't stopped all day. So as I recap throughout this whole challenge, it's day 29, although I didn't lose a lot of weight, I feel a lot strong. I look a lot stronger, both physically and mentally. And my productivity has gone through the roof. When I first started this challenge, I only thought I was gonna do 30 days straight on a bike. After all, 30 days on a bike inside is long enough. The hardest part about this challenge is the monotony. Literally staring at yourself day in and day out throughout a virtual world isn't a lot of fun. So thinking back, I had a system when I was training to cycle 24 hours in a row. That system included all the different streaming services, listening to audiobooks on Amazon Audible, and a few different online courses to help push my career forward. I continued on the bike every single day, no matter what. 
but it was over a very significant time of the year because a lot of things get in the way when you do a 90 day challenge. 30 days is just 30 days, but 90 days is a whole nother story, especially when you do it over November, December, and January. Every day you need to be on the bike. Some days got really interesting. On Christmas day, I woke up at 5 a.m. due to a snowstorm, jumped on the bike, drove two and a half hours to my brother's house. The next day, Boxing Day, spent it with family, drove back, jumped on the bike at 9.30 p.m. just to be consistent with doing the challenge every single day. And that happened more times than I can count. No matter if you're sick, sore, or even hungover. On day 48, I had dental surgery, which I had two implants here's orders he told me that I can only do 15 minutes on the bike if you're new here I've recorded every workout on Strava and on Zwift and my doctor is watching today is day 61 of a 90-day cycling challenge my goal for this challenge is to increase my FTP or wattage or if you don't know what that is it's, it's basically power on the bike I'm starting this challenge at 188 I will do an hour on the bike every day. So this brings me to the rules of this challenge. I will call this the hour of power. Each day will get progressively harder and harder because I will be pushing myself every day. I will follow the isogenics plan the way that it was designed, which is two shakes and a few little extras and a healthy dinner. I'm doing the isogenics system because I was requested by my doctor to follow up with a soft diet. So the goal of this challenge is to increase my FTP and finish the 90 day cycling challenge strong. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Day one, day 61. I enrolled in the Tour de Zwift and the Wahoo Climbing Challenge. Day one was just like any other day one, tough. Actually, day one to day seven was tough. Day two. Day three, I popped my tire. Day four, new tire. Day five, day six. Day seven, which brings me to a week one recap. I'm down two and a half pounds. I'm starting to get my strength back and feel a lot more comfortable in the saddle. Because this was the smallest room in my house, a lot of people asked, how do I go to the bathroom? So I binge watched the new Ozark, the new book of Boba Fett on Disney Plus, and also caught up on all my YouTube strategy lessons with Think Media. Day eight, day nine, day 10, day 11, day 12, day 13, day 14. At the end of week two, I'm down four pounds. Day 15, day 16, day 17, day 18. Day 19, day 20, day 21. And I'm starting to notice a lot of improved strength on the bike. And the hour is starting to get a lot easier. I'm also noticing that I'm drinking a lot more water and I have a lot less cravings for snacks at weird times of the day. It's been interesting to watch what proper nutrition can do. I'm hitting a higher wattage with less effort. Seeing that change is making it a lot easier to jump back onto the bike and do it day in and day out to finish this 30 day challenge. Day 22, day 23, day 24, day 25, day 26, day 27, day 28. Day 29 was painful. This is what we call the hour of power. We're increasing the FTP. Time to see what the last 89 days did. It was a true hour of power or hour of pain, but no pain, no gain. Boom, mic drop, day 30, which is also day 90, check mark. Done. This brings me to the moment of truth. I'm down to 180.2, a loss of eight pounds in this challenge and 12 pounds for the entire challenge. I feel great and it feels really weird not to be on the bike. If you enjoyed this video, watch my next video and consider subscribing.